what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Ooh, so excited to have you here today. So today we're talking about a topic that I see quite often in the comment section on here, people asking, should I stay top mount intercooler? Should I go front mount intercooler? What are the benefits? What are the disadvantages? So today we're gonna go into that and start talking about the differences between the top mount and the front mount intercoolers, which one is better if there is a better one. So it'll be, a, it'll be a good topic to go into. Now for reference, on my 17 STI behind me, I run the ETS three and a half inch front mount intercooler on the car. Right now we are still stock location turbo, but you know, we're here, we're doing it. It's room for improvement. So with that, we're just gonna grab the camera. We're gonna start going over what is better and just, you know, we're gonna answer all the questions. So let's just, let's just do it. All right, so we're just gonna start jumping into it. So first we're gonna talk about the factory intercooler that comes with the car. Now both WRXs and STIs are gonna come with a top mount intercooler. You're gonna see that abbreviated a lot as TMIC, and you're gonna see front mount intercooler abbreviated as FMIC. Now the OEM top mount intercooler on the WRXs are very small in comparison to what they could be. Now that's not to say that that small intercooler is a bad thing, it gets the job done for factory horsepower, but as we're all here, we all like to modify our cars and push the limits for what these engines can handle. Now the STI can handle about 350 to 375 wheel horsepower reliably on that top mount intercooler before you're gonna start to see some degrade in power numbers due to the limitations of that top mount intercooler. Now some of the other factors that are gonna play into effect with the top mount intercooler, the factory turbo and the factory heat shield all set up over there is you're gonna end up getting a lot of heat soak from that turbo. Now with these cars, like I I said it is a very compact engine base so there's not a lot of room in there and there's not a lot of airflow around that turbo area so what does heat do it rises when it rises it starts to sink up into that just aluminum steel anything it can grab onto and with that intercooler being right there you're going to get a lot of leaching of that heat soak from that turbo over to that intercooler which is going to end up increasing your iat's your iat is going to stand for intake air temperature now with iat's yes you are able to monitor your iat's off of your access port and it may not look like they're that high. However, because you're reading your IATs off of your math sensor, which is located up in the intake right after the filter, you're not getting an accurate representation for the actual temperature of the air going into the throttle body. Now, it's it could be said that it's negligible to the heat soak off of the engine or off of the turbo, but you're gonna start seeing some real numbers when you're starting to get on the car a lot, especially on the dyno. Some shops will actually take a break to let things cool down a little bit because that intercooler is gonna start to soak up a lot of that heat soak from the turbo. Now, with that, there are some really good top mount intercooler brands out there that you can replace it with aftermarket-wise. Processed West is one of the fantastic ones that is a little more pricey. ETS has some really good and big top mount intercoolers which can help displace some of that heat soak since you have have a larger surface area, it's gonna take longer for that heat soak to travel all the way through the intercooler. Mishimoto makes some, and there's just a Grim Speed also is another one that makes a good top mount intercooler. However, even with those aftermarket intercoolers, you're gonna have to ask yourself a question. What is the end power goal for the car? A lot of these top mount intercoolers can be rated up to 500 to 550 wheel horsepower, some of them exceeding that. But once you start getting into those really high prices for top mount intercoolers, you could get a good front mount intercooler for the same price. Now we're gonna get into front mount intercoolers here in a minute but top mount intercooler wise on the aftermarket set increasing that volume is going to increase the amount of air that can go through and the amount of air that's passing over that intercooler so the way it works is it takes air compressed air from the turbo puts it up into the intercooler where that air is then passed over by ambient air temperature which has helped bringing it down even more. So the cooler the air, the more power, the more bang, the more you have fun. So once it's been passed over and that air has been cooled, then it enters the throttle body, it goes into the cylinders, makes a bang, comes out the back end, and you bam, you got some horsepower right there. Now even with that, like I was saying, once you start getting on the car, even with those aftermarket top mount intercoolers, you're gonna start seeing some heat soak. But you can reduce this. There are measures out there that help you reduce the amount of heat soak that actually goes into that top mount intercooler. You can get turbo blankets. after market heat shields, gold reflective tape. There are a lot of measures. You can even spray that ice water to cool. If you've got a cool GD model and you got that intercooler sprayer, you can use that to your benefit. When you go out to the track, throw some ice water back in that tank back there, keep it on while you're running the track and that'll really help keep those IATs down since you're pushing cold air over it. But overall, top mount intercoolers are a great choice. Personally, 
Obviously, I prefer front mount intercoolers, but we're gonna get into front mount intercoolers here right now and talk about those and why I prefer front mount intercoolers over top mount intercoolers. Now that we've talked about top mount intercoolers, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to front mount intercoolers now. So something that's just a general question that I always get in the comments whenever we're talking about my front mount intercooler is, is there noticeable lag with it? You'd assume so that there'd be noticeable lag going from a top mount intercooler with very minimal charge piping to a front mount intercooler with very long charge piping. Now the charge piping really doesn't make a huge difference when it comes to the front mount intercooler. One aspect that's really gonna depend on the lag is the turbo that you're running. Obviously, if you run a larger turbo, it's gonna take longer to spool up and you're gonna notice more lag, especially on a front mount intercooler, but you're only gonna notice that lag upon initial spool. Once, you, once the system's already pressurized, it is it stays pressurized till you get off a boost and it evacuates that air out of the bypass valve or the blow off valve. So as long as the system stays pressurized, there's no lag. Now with stock turbo and front mount intercooler, I notice zero lag with the car at all. This can be tuned out. It can be n just unnoticeable. Like I didn't notice any lag when I went from my front mount intercooler over to my top mount intercooler. But like I said, it's also going to depend on the turbo setup that you're running and what you want later down the road. So now that we've kind of talked about the lag aspect, which I see a lot, and if anyone has any questions about lag, please feel free to drop it below and we can talk about it. We're gonna talk about one of the one of the main reasons why I got a front mount intercooler over a top mount intercooler and why I think this is very beneficial. The main reason that I like front mount intercoolers is the reduced IAT temps. So having that front mount intercooler up in the front of the bumper, you're not getting any heat soak from the turbo, the engine, anything else in there. You're only getting that ambient air that's passing through the bumper, through the intercooler. Now this helps with a lot of things. A lot of us daily drive these cars. I drive mine to work all the time. I sit in traffic for about an hour a day on the freeway, especially in the summertime. It can get really hot under the hood and you're having all of that heat kind of cycle around. Now with the intercooler being up in the front, yes, you're still getting hot air from traffic blowing over that intercooler, but it's much, much cooler than the air that's actually sitting ambient in the engine bay. Now, I wanted this because it's fantastic for keeping those IATs down and I need to do a speed density relocation. So it's essentially taking the math, moving the intake air temperature sensor off the math, putting it into the charge piping of the intercooler so I can get accurate representation of what the actual IATs are in the car. IATs are a huge thing that a lot of people look over and they play a significant role in just overall engine health. This isn't something that I would just kind of brush off on your access port. I generally keep IATs up all the time. You don't want to be getting into boost when you're just sucking in a whole bunch of hot air into the car. You want to be able to cool that air down as much as you can. And having that intercooler up in the front of the car allows you to do that a lot more efficiently than it does a top mount intercooler. Now, when it comes to some of those IAT questions, I'm gonna link a graph down below to a website that I found that has just very good visual representation of just kind of how the speed of your car correlates with the intake air temperature when you have a front mount intercooler versus a top mount intercooler. And you can see that the IATs coming off that front mount intercooler are significantly lower than those of that top mount. Now, another thing that you'll kind of hear quite often is people say you don't need a front mount intercooler unless you're running an aftermarket turbo, you're pushing a lot more horsepower, you're over 400 brake horsepower. That's simply not the case. Just adding a front mount intercooler is gonna free up more horsepower as, as it is allowing your car to get that cooler air. Intercoolers are all, pretty much all about just intake air temperatures and getting those IATs as low as you can. Now, having that front mount intercooler up there really helps to free up some of that horsepower because it's not getting just clogged up by all that hot air. Yes, the charge piping can be a little annoying to deal with, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. Now, moving through front mount intercoolers some more, you can, there's all sorts of ways to, to route the intercoolers and these cars specifically in any other car. You can do custom piping, you can do ETS front mount intercoolers, you can do parent cob, the list goes on forever. Ooh, and if the charge piping length really bothers you with some of these front mount intercoolers, you can do the reverse manifold trick that a lot of people do. Just taking the intake manifold, rotating 180 degrees, relocating that alternator, getting rid of the secondary air pump, and you can run that charge piping just straight down. Just kind of like the FA20 WRXs do. It's very, it's a very short intercooler path, and if the charge piping length does bother you, it reduces it significantly since it doesn't have to go all the way around back to the back side of the throttle body. And if you do decide to go rotate a turbo, it also, it also shortens that as well. So there's a lot of benefits to front mount intercoolers. Another fantastic reason why I prefer front mount intercoolers over top mount intercoolers, as like I said, it does free up more room for more horsepower later on down the road. So that way you're not buying an aftermarket top mount intercooler now just to make three 
350 wheel horsepower when later on you decide you want more power and you're rebuilding the car again you already have that front mount intercooler in there so that way you're saving yourself some money down the road plus i mean front mount intercoolers just look better in my opinion also you all know how much i hate taking off those damn top mount intercoolers and putting them back on Getting the, getting the couplers to go over the turbo and over the throttle body at the same time, it's just n no, 100% no. But this was a just a very brief walkthrough of top mount intercoolers versus front mount intercoolers. And personally, I say front mount intercoolers are better than top mount intercoolers just based off of what we have talked about in this. Now that's not to say that top mount intercoolers are bad, they're very good, but it's also gonna depend on the modifications you have done to the car, your power goals for the car, and what you want out of it. Like I've been saying, I just placed the first order for ethanol parts or for the fueling system for ethanol parts. So I have my fuel rails on the way and uh, I need to order the fuel lines here soon. But since I am trying to shoot for higher horsepower, having that front mount intercooler has just, it saved me a little bit of money because I didn't decide to buy a top mount intercooler just for that shorter charge piping. So think ahead when you're buying your parts. If you know you're gonna want more horsepower later on, a front mount intercooler is gonna be the way to go. But with that, like I said, if anyone has any questions, go ahead, drop them below. If you have any more good information to add to this video, go ahead, drop it below for everyone so that way we can all continue learning, we can all continue growing. But with that, let's get this camera back up on the bench. We will wrap this video up. Ooh! Everyone, so that's gonna kind of wrap it up on top mount intercoolers and front mount intercoolers. Now, just to recap here, some pros to the top mount intercooler is you're gonna have reduced charge piping, which is gonna mean, if that bothers you that much, reduced lag with that one. They're still, still very beneficial in reducing IAT temperatures. Anything over that factory top mount intercooler is gonna get those temps down, even with the heat soak that you're seeing under the hood. Top mount intercoolers are generally cheaper than front mount intercoolers, but some of the cons, like I said, the heat soak can be a problem, especially in the summertime, sitting in traffic traffic. Top mount intercoolers can also be kind of limiting on power depending on what your power goals are. If you know you're going to want more power later on, save yourself the money, get yourself a front mount intercooler over that top mount intercooler. Now when it comes to front mount intercoolers, some of the pros are they are good for higher horsepower numbers. You're going to see a good reduction in IAT temperatures with those ones going up there. Overall, you're really not going to see any lag differences. Even on a stock turbo, you're not going to notice it once the system is pressurized and you're not even going to notice it when you're initially getting it a boost that boost is still gonna come on like you expect it to, especially once you're getting that pro tune. Now, some of the disadvantages of front mount intercoolers is they just cost more. I'm gonna be honest, that's the only disadvantage I can really think of because personally, you're not gonna see any turbo lag when you're swapping over to a top mount, or when you're swapping over to a front mount intercooler unless you're running a pretty large turbo, but that's gonna be the turbo taking time to spool up and pressurizing the system. Once the system's already pressurized, you're not even gonna know it's there. Now, that is going to kind of wrap it up on top mount intercoolers versus front mount intercoolers. I'll link below some good brands for both uh, top mount and front mount for the uh, for the STIs, the WRXs, and uh, some of the older gen WRXs and STIs as well. Ooh, but if you guys liked this video, go ahead, hit that little thumbs up, turn that little thumbs up blue. Ooh. Ooh. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be, let's go ahead and do it up here in this my left, your right corner. And, you know, if you're feeling it, go ahead. Give that little thing a click and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!